How to build a 1.14 wooden starter house. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Green, and let's just dive straight into it. So there's only two things we're really going to need, and that is the spruce log and the dark oak, which is just over here. So obviously the first thing that we're going to need to do to make a starter wooden house is collect wood. And obviously that takes a little bit of time, but you know, with a stone axe and about 15 minutes of your time, you can not only clear out a space suitable for your house, and you won't need a massive space, but you can also collect all of the logs that you need. And while these leaves are decaying, you'll see that the area that I've cleared out is actually not that big, but this is big enough for what we're going to be creating. I will say this, it can be a little bit inconvenient to find a dark forest biome next to a spruce one, but they do exist, and a little bit of searching and collecting along the way, and you will be absolutely fine. So now that we've got our wood, all we've got to do now is start the foundation of our starter house. And what makes this starter house 1.14 is the fact that we're actually going to be using barrels as the base of our base. <laughs> so creating a rectangle with a 4 center and then a 5, we will then put stripped spruce log in the corners and barrels in between them. So you should end up with something a little like this. While we're here, let's replace the floor with some spruce wood. Also bear in mind that these barrels are relatively expensive, but they come in handy later on, and we'll, we'll cover that a bit later on as well. We'll need to build up the corners. Up four blocks should do it, and it won't be the only time that you accidentally open a barrel in this build. I've left a little space here for a door, so why don't we pop that in right now. Choose any door you like, but I'm going to go for dark oak. Now, since barrels are so expensive and this is a starter house, I won't be covering the entire house in them. However, we will be using them a little bit. So I'm going to add a couple of spruce planks either side and then another stripped spruce log in the middle. And then we're going to add some more barrels on the top. Round the back here, we're going to do two planks here and then barrels on the top of this as well. And we'll repeat this on this side as well. The front is a little bit different as we're going to cover this entirely in spruce planks. Adding a couple of stripped spruce logs here and here, and then some more spruce planks in the middle. At this time, your house should look something like this. We've got some walls and some spaces for windows and not a lot else. So this is a good opportunity just to fill those spaces in. I'm gonna add some light gray stained glass panes. However, if you don't have access to these particular dyes, they're not incredibly difficult to get hold of, but by all means, just use normal glass or even iron bars, it's up to you. But I'm going to add this in here for our windows as it works quite well. Above the door, feel free to add a spruce staircase and now it's time to add in that dreaded roof, the bit that a lot of people struggle with. So we're going to start with a classic A-frame with an overhang on the side of this stripped spruce log. And we'll simply just follow the staircase upwards until they meet in the middle. Now, in theory, if you've added four blocks here, these should meet in the middle like so. No, not like that, like so. And that leaves a little gap there, which we're just going to fill in with some stripped spruce logs again. But what we're going to do is add a little detail right here. So what we're going to do is remove those and add a little circle. Well, it's not really a circle, is it? It's a square. We're going to add a square of the spruce stairs like so. And then on the inside, we're going to add in some actual glass blocks here. But again, I'm going to go for the light gray as it is my favorite. And then to get a little bit more technical, I'm just going to add a couple of slabs there and there. However, the front of this building is looking just a little bit bland, especially around the door. Now, this is a totally optional decoration. However, I think this makes the house look really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is take a bunch of campfires, which are an extraordinarily expensive block for a starter house. So you may want to spend a little bit of time finishing everything else first, but let's do this anyway. And I'm going to place them above the door like so. And I'm going to place them at this angle so that the wood sticks over the end on this one. And we only need to do two lines, so you don't need a huge amount of campfires. And then we're going to have to extinguish them. And I do that using a water bucket. A lot of people have told me in the past that you can extinguish a campfire with a wooden shovel or a shovel. I don't know if that's the case in Java, so please stop leaving comments about it. 
And then underneath, we're going to add some dark oak fences. And that creates this little patio area that looks really, really nice. So that's actually the front of the house pretty much taken care of for the time being. Let's finish off this roof. So we're going to match the A-frame from that side straight over on this one. And again, it should match in the middle like so. And this time we really are going to fill all of this with stripped spruce log. Now, as for the center of this roof, what we're going to do is just add a little detail before we carry on adding the staircases. So we'll add a couple of upside down ones like so, and then add a few slabs on top like this so that it connects over the top and it gives it more breathing space, shall we say. And then we're going to add a full block over the top like this and then fill in all of the staircases left over. You can even extend that like this and even another layer if you want the full shape and then fill in the rest with the dark oak stairs. You need far less dark oak than you do spruce for this build. However, it must be said that because you need so many barrels, you just use whatever you've got the most of to make the barrels. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side with the slabs and then the extra detail if you want. That actually completes most of the wooden shack itself for this starter house. And in creative, this has taken me about 10 minutes to build. So I imagine with a little bit of resource collection, it will take about 20 minutes to build. However, we're not quite done because we need to start thinking about survivability. So I'm going to add a bucket of water here and an upside down dark oak slab to hide it. I'm then going to take the diamond hoe and add a little area around it to farm some things. Now, annoyingly, you do get this little line of dirt underneath. And so I'm just going to knock that little bit out and replace it with spruce. It does make a big difference to how your building looks very complete. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, because I'm in this spruce area, I can just take these sweet berry bushes and what I'm going to do, instead of making a very expensive oak fence, what I'm going to do is make a fence out of sweet berry bushes because the animals and creatures and mobs and everything, they won't actually go in it. And if they do, they die and you get free food anyway. So not only do they act as a natural barrier, this fence will actually produce food from you for you and they actually grow really, really quickly. So I'm going to protect my crops like this. Another reason why this particular house is a 114 one. And if I want to go in and out, I literally just break that one and replace it because these berry bushes will spam berries so much. You will have more berries than you know what to do with. So it's probably easier just to harvest this bush, remove it, and then place it back. It's instant. It's no hassle at all. So that kind of takes care of the farming side of things. The only thing left to do really is to add a composter in here. And just to make this look a little bit more nice, I will add a spruce trap door on the top. And then with your excess sweetberry bushes, you can use them to make some bone meal for, well, maybe even the dye to your windows. Now, if you can get your hand on some podzel or something else, feel free to add a little like dirt pathway patchwork here, something, something like that to make it seem like this area has been walked on a little bit. Failing that, you could just add wood instead. So that takes care of most of the exterior. We'll come back to adding some extra details at the end, but let's move on to the inside. Now, four by five interior is a decent size. It's not too big and it's not incredibly small. Now, the obvious thing for me is that there are a lot of storage barrels. We don't have to place a single chest because our house is actually made out of storage. And that's where the ingenious 114 stuff comes into this particular design. However, it still looks very incomplete in here. So let's finish it off. I'm gonna start off by adding a bed, then a bedside table, and even some lights in the form of some lovely lanterns, which again, expensive, Add a torch if you feel like it is too much. Because we should have a lot of spruce or dark oak, I'm basically going to just spam lots of these around. And I'm even gonna add more barrels around this for even more storage, as if there isn't enough already. Now, what you want to add in here is completely up to you. I personally would go for a few furnaces, maybe a smoker, maybe a blast furnace, but of course, don't forget, your crafting table as well. Now, if you want to make this even more space efficient, 
move those into the floor itself because you can of course still access these and you can tell what they are just by looking on the floor and then you've still got this area to walk on and access to the barrels behind them. Another thing that I might add is an anvil, although that is a very expensive block, but very, very useful at the same time. And then obviously as you progress through the game, you can add more and more onto your shelves until you eventually outgrow this tiny shack. You can improve the details to the roof by adding some upside down staircases if you want to. This shouldn't affect your storage at all as you can still access all of the barrels around. But there is one clever little feature that I would really like to add to this house, and that is a basement. So I'm going to remove these six blocks and add some trap doors like this, and you can open it up like so. So to make this basement, what I'm going to do is actually dig out a small area underneath the house, and then add some staircases like this, as deep as you want to go. This could be the access to your mines, if you want or it could be access to another room. So if you wanted to upgrade your house, this would definitely be the direction I would take it. My room of choice, of course, would be an enchanting room with a lantern on the top, and then maybe even have this continue downwards into a mine. Now, of course, an enchanting room is not a starter base feature. However, what I'm saying is you can create anything you like down here, as long as you've got the space. Actually, in my house here, I actually have access to the outside because I happened to build mine on a little bit of a slope. So what I'm going to do is actually create a secondary entrance into the house, because why not? Working with the terrain around you can be really, really rewarding. So I was basically just gonna add a couple of spruce doors in here and maybe even a couple of spruce trap doors there as well. So there you have it, there's like the cellar entrance, there's the main house, and that's basically a really nice, I mean it doesn't have to be like this of course, you could just have this as a hidden room, this could go down to the mine, it could go down to anything you like, that's the point, but when it's all closed up, you've still got all of the space you need for your inside of your house. Now there's a couple more features that I would love to add to the rest of this house, one of which is to make it a little bit more productive. So what I'm going to do is actually remove the blocks underneath this side of the house and add water. I'm then going to cover that back up with grass and then add sugarcane all the way along with a couple of spruce fences at the end. That way I can actually be growing some sugarcane as I am progressing in my base and I can slowly work my way towards getting enough books for my enchanting table. So just removing those every now and again. I would also add some lanterns to the corners of the build, like that. That gives it enough light for those things to grow, and the same on this side for the farm. And as you can see, in the time that we've been building, there's plenty of sweet berries around, and even though the crops have not grown at all. So these are spamming all over the place, yet we don't have a single crop ready. So these are a really quick and easy food source for, your, for the start of the game. Now there's only one final optional thing that I may add to this build and that would be a chimney simply because they do look really really nice. So what I would do if you just wanted a simple one is a cobblestone pillar and then a cobblestone wall on the end like that. If you want to take it one step further of course you can make this a little bit thicker like so with uh, a few more cobblestone blocks. This shouldn't affect the usefulness of your house at all. It is purely aesthetic. We could add a couple cobblestone walls and then of course a campfire in the middle and then it's got smoke coming out the top. You can always improve the way that this looks with a few upside down staircases, a slab or two. Totally up to you. And that is complete. So this is my 1.14 starter house design. It doesn't really include any redstone or farms or anything like that. It's only got your manual farms which includes sugar canes and your food and inside we've got plenty of storage in the form of barrels which are integrated into the walls and then you've got space for all of the furnaces that you need, the crafting tables, everything that you would need in a survival base with the added option to go underground into a cellar like this and you can create whatever it is that you want to create, whether it's an enchanting table or you end up going down into your mine. I've actually tested this design in survival mode 
and it took me approximately 35 minutes to make from start to end with absolutely nothing in my hands and I did start in an area similar to this so I managed to gather all the dark oak, all the spruce and everything that I needed but everything is pretty much made out of spruce and dark oak with a little bit of cobble mixed in and a little tiny bit of iron so everything is really accessible, really cheap and the results I think are quite nice. And of course, you can start off with a house like this, but you never know where it might end up going. Maybe even the sky limit. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and good bye!